Hello, so today we're going to start this bridge drawing and we're going to paint in the water and the sky with warm and cool colors. So I read you the book Bridges Are to Cross and in the story it talked about lots of different kinds of bridges. So I came up with a handout with lots of different bridge designs. This one's got, um, looks like about 15 different designs and then we have some here. And then when you flip it over there's some more on the back. So I want you to pick a bridge that interests you that you would like to draw today. Any one of these bridges or you can draw your own bridge. It's completely up to you. And you're going to start with a small white piece of paper pencil and eraser and a ruler and the first thing you need to do is write your name on your paper name and the day you have art day A, day B, day C. Flip it over and you probably want to start with the pylons or the main part of the bridge that's in the water. Um, it might be a good place to start so like these parts here that are in the water that kind of hold the bridge up. This, these poles here and they're usually made of concrete that's poured deep into the bed of the riverbed. And so I'm going to just kind of use my ruler as a place for the base of my bridge. So I'm just drawing on the two sides and the top. And then I want to look and make sure this is about the same height. So I need to bring this down a little bit, the top of this with the top of that, and draw another one. Now you can draw more than two of these, but I tend to just stick with two. And I'm going to use my ruler to draw the bottoms of them. So now I need to erase these lines here. Okay, so now I need to decide the design of my bridge. What do I want to do? Do I want to do a big arch? Do I want to do something more like the Golden Gate Bridge that has all of these steel girders that go from place to place? Um, do I want it to be more... Um, made of concrete? Do I want it to be like towers of a castle? What do I want? <clears throat> so I get to decide. I'm going to start with the part of the bridge where the transportation goes across and I'm going to make this go all the way across my paper and I'd like you to do the same. And I don't want it to just be one skinny line so I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to draw a second line right above. So this is the part where if this was a bridge for a train, the trains would go across here and this is, would be where the train tracks are. Or if it's more of a car bridge, then there would be cars that go across. So I think I'm going to do, um, instead of doing like an arch, I think I'm going to do two tall columns and then kind of um, something more like the Golden Gate. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a wider column and then I'm going to make it get skinnier. So I want, I want this to be the same length over here or the same height, so I'm going to line up my ruler and make a little mark here to kind of help me to know where the top of that should be. Notice that I'm using my ruler for all my straight lines. So now I'm going to do kind of a point at the top. That didn't angle enough. So I want that to be about the same height. So I'm put a little mark up here. So I know where that goes to. Now I try to make sure that the space here was even on both of these. Okay, and so now I want to do the wires that kind of swoop down. And I'm going to draw this freehand. And I want it to be fairly even, so I'm going to draw it lightly so I can kind of sketch it and then erase, easily erase what I don't want to keep. And then I'm going to have this go off my paper here because we're drawing a bridge that we can only see part of and it's going off our paper. And I know that it goes off the paper here so I want that to be about the same height. So I'm going to draw another loop there. Okay, and then I want to draw like these wires that go down. I'm not going to draw them too close together. But I want them to be fairly even. I don't want to have some that are really close together and some that are really far apart. I want them to be about the same space. So this clear ruler really lends itself well to that, to be able to just see how much space is between each of the wires. Then you're going to get a placemat to go under your work. And I want you to use a, a marker, permanent marker, to trace your lines. So you're going to color in any of the big shapes because it's going to be, the bridge is going to be all in black, like it's a silhouette or shadowed from the sunrise or the sunset. 
So I'm not just gonna trace my pencil lines, the shapes that I drew, I'm gonna color in with the marker. And I don't want the pylons to go all the way to the bottom. I want to paint the water so that it looks like the pylons are coming out of the water. So that's why I don't put them all the way at the bottom of the paper. If you wanna put yours all the way at the bottom of the paper, that's okay, you can do that. You're the artist, you get to decide. Now, if you get a marker that stops working, that's more of a gray instead of a black, I want you to throw it away and get a new one. I have plenty of markers. And remember these markers can do a fat line by using this diagonal on the marker, or if you use the tippy tip, you can do a skinnier line. So I'm gonna use a thin line for the wires. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint. So now I'm going to get a water basin and a watercolor tray. And I want you to use warm colors in the water, in the, in the sky, and cool colors in the water. Also, if you could go back and take an eraser and erase any pencil lines you didn't co color over completely would be helpful. And I also want you, a little bit below the bridge, I want you to draw a very light pencil line, very light, like hardly pressing light so line so that you know where the water is going to stop and where the sky is going to begin and i said that it needed to be below the bridge but if you want to put it a little bit higher up um, and maybe put the water up but i'm afraid that if you put the water too high up it's going to look like the bridge is under the water so that's why i like to keep the water line below the bottom of the bridge where the cars drive across and we're not going to add any transportation or anything like that we're just going to do a bridge drawing with some water and um, sunrise or sunset sky with warm colors so when artists paint they try to paint in the direction of <clears throat> what they're painting so for instance if they're painting grass they paint up and down because grass grows from the ground up towards the sun so it grows up and down vertical but water lays flat so they paint when they paint water they usually paint side to side so I want you to paint horizontally today side to side so I'm going to get some um, some of the uh, cool colors blues purples greens if I want to use green I can use green um, get those wet with a little bit of water on top and um, I want you to start with your lightest color first. So I'm going to probably, I think I'll use some of this yellow green color. Or no, I think I'll use some of this blue green color. So um, I'm going to start with my lightest color first. And right below the pencil line, I'm just going to draw or paint a broken line. So paint this cool colors right below the pencil line, right at the pencil line, horizontal strokes. And it's okay if I accidentally or if I intentionally paint a little bit of the bridge and get a little paint on the bridge, that's okay. But I want you to try to fill in this space. So as you go from light to dark colors, you are going to fill in more and more of the space to where almost all of the white is completely painted. So right now, I'm not, I don't have much filled in. But as I move to a darker color and change my colors, that's gonna start to change and fill in. And the colors can mix and blend. Just try not to mix them in your tray. If they mix on your paper, that's okay. And I'm making sure when I put this blue down that I'm trying to put it in a on a white paper and not just on the paint I've already painted. So I'm putting it between the colors that I've painted, this blue-green color. So now I'm gonna rinse my paper off and get my next darkest color. And this, I think three colors is going to be good enough for each, for the water and the sky. So this purple is going to be the last color that I used for the water. And I'm going to make sure that as I paint this purple that I fill in a lot of this white space. All right, so since this is my last color, I'm kind of going through and filling in some of the white. Now, not all the white has to be colored, but major most of the water should be painted. You can leave some white showing. So now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off, clean it off completely, and now I'm going to go to warm colors. And I'm going to stick with some reds and some oranges. For my sky, you might want to use yellows and oranges. And so if that's what you're going to use, you want to do the lightest color first. So you'll always do yellow first. And my yellow is a little messy right now. But, but that's okay. It can be cleaned off if I were going to use it. But I'm going to use this yellow orange first, my lightest color first, and go to my darkest. And so as I paint, I'm not going to paint real close to the water because I don't want to accidentally touch the blue and it bleed together. So I'm going to paint close 
but I'm going to make sure I don't touch. So it's going to you're going to have to be a little careful and um, make sure that you don't let the two colors mix or bleed together. Now, if you accidentally touch the blue into your sky, the water into your sky, then just go get a paper towel and lay it down and pull it straight up. Don't rub it because it'll um, tear your paper and it'll also rub the colors and mix them together. But if you just lay it down and pull it straight up, it should be able to blot that mixed color away. So I have much more sky than I did water, so I'm going to have to really use, um, take a lot of time to fill in the sky. And I just paint right over the wires because they're small and tiny. And so there's my yellow orange, my lightest color that I'm using. So now I'm going to move to a medium color. And now I'm going to start to fill in this red orange and the white spaces, making sure I'm still going horizontal. This is very important. I'm not going to change and go vertical. Up and down, I'm going to still stay horizontal and match those brush strokes with the water. Oops. All right, so it's bleeding there. So I don't have a paper towel on me. I'm going to use a tissue. I want you to use a paper towel. You're going to take it, lay it down, pull straight up. And then that should be good enough. All right, and now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off and go to my darkest color, red, and fill in the remainder of the red. All right, so I want you to notice that I didn't take my paintbrush and just go crazy across short little strokes side to side. It's starting to really puddle and mix here in the middle, but that's okay. Um, I had a little bit of mixture there and I blotted it up and that's good. So it's really very wet right now. If I pick this up and turn this, all the color is going to run and we don't want that to happen. So you're going to very carefully put this on the drying rack. You're going to have to, two hands with the brown paper under your work, very carefully. Don't let it tilt because the, the paint will run. Hold it very flat and put it on the drying rack. And the very last step that I want you to do for your work is when it's dry, you're going to be able to see this paint sitting on top of your bridge. And it almost looks like fog covering your bridge. But I want you to go back with your marker and paint and just go over the top of that paint, wherever you see that paint, and just paint, take the marker and go over the top to kind of cover that paint up so that your bridge stands out and um, is nice and bold. So this part, you don't want to do sloppy. You want to keep it as neat as possible. So just try to stay right on top of your bridge that you can see through the paint. All right, and once you kind of clean it up, that looks so much nicer now. Your bridge really stands out and it no longer looks like it's in the fog. And so now that you've done that, you are finished with your bridge painting. Good job, second grade.